Hello everybody, welcome to Crafty Soup. My name is Misty. Our team over at the Counterfeit Kit Challenge is doing a 12 Days of Christmas event, so we are going to be using the lyrics of the song to inspire our scrapbooking lives. Now this could be just taking a photo or writing down a story idea. I am going to do a full layout today, and the first line of that Christmas story is a partridge in a pear tree. So I'm going to be telling a story about uh, Christmas trees from years past, and the technique prompt for this was to use a pear-shaped layout or a bottom-heavy layout. So I'll talk about that a little bit more as we go along. First up, I pulled out my Christmas stash of supplies and I'm choosing just a few things. So I've got some alphas, some chipboard, and a few sheets of pattern paper. And I wanted to keep the pattern papers fairly um, neutral except for my focal red pattern back there. I do have my photos converted to black and white because, because these photos are from years past uh, the color and pattern and distraction of them um, is best hidden a little bit with that uh, black and white conversion. So how I am approaching that pear shaped layout or bottom heavy layout is I'm going to use the, the gallon pint quart gallon quart pint <laughs> method of design. So gallon is the biggest portion, quart is the second biggest portion, and pint is the third biggest. So I'm doing that with my pattern papers. My biggest portion is that red polka dot. Both color-wise, it's visually bigger and physically it's bigger. And then my middle section there is a um, softer color and print. And then my upper portion there is yet even softer in color and smaller in size. So that is my gallon quart pint method here. And putting that gallon on the bottom gives you kind of that pear shape where it's wider at the bottom and narrower at the top. All right, once I've got the basic framework for my layout done, I am going to zhuzh it up. I am not going to do a huge amount of embellishing on this layout. I am going to put some tags with subtitles on each of those photos. I've got my title title, which is going to go up there at the top. I've got that set up here on my little ruler. I've been having some troubles lately with getting my uh, letters to stay in place. Um, I had a lot of luck with this ruler in the past and I had to make a new one because it wore out and the new material that I'm using isn't quite as um, as sticky, so my letters are constantly tipping over. So I need to rework that again. At any rate, I've got everything adhered down and I'm looking for tags. I just cut those out of the back of one of my pieces of pattern paper. I saved specific portions. I think that was the blue gritty pattern paper there at the top. I saved specific portion from the back of that paper to use for these tags. And I'm trying to get the color balance of the tags to fit well with the overall flow of the layout. I'm going to use that tag on the upper or in the middle photo to cover up some distracting elements in the background on the upper portion. And then that will give me kind of a triangle shape for all my tags to sit in. Now the middle portion of the layout will hold all my journaling and some embellishing. And I pull out a scratch um, packaging from my Christmas stash and I'm going to create another tag since my photos are gonna have tag elements. I will do my main journaling on a tag as well. So I'm cutting out that uh, packaging with a tag die set. And then I pulled out a whole bunch of fibers because I couldn't decide. So I'll set those aside until my brain thinks on it a little bit more. And in the meantime, I will prep these uh, other tags so that I can get to the journaling. Now this tag does have some words on it, which is why I didn't want to use it at first, but then I decided if I pull out a selection of stickers, I can go ahead and do my photo captions out of stickers instead of just handwriting. So this process takes a little while. I skip through most of that, but each tree has its own little tag. So this tree here on the left is the sparse tree because these stories are all about um, having toddlers and Christmas trees at the same time and kind of some of the adjustments you have to make with little hands around. So that middle tree is called the branch because we were inspired by the Christmas uh, movie Emmett Otter's Judd Band Christmas. If you're a Jim Henson fan, you probably know that one. And then the, the, the 
the third tree over there is the up high tree because we put it up on a table to keep it out of toddler reach. Um, although I don't know that it was great because we put the Christmas tree skirt over the table and that could have just been yanked down. But luckily, nothing bad happened and all of our Christmas trees survived the toddler years. All right, so I have made some decisions about the fibers that I want to use. I'm going to use the fanciest ribbon for my journaling. And then I will use some smaller ribbons for my um, photo caption tags. And in fact, as I was putting the ribbon through, I thought, oh, that's just kind of too flimsy. So I went ahead and I'm going to double up my fibers and use two separate fibers there. And that made a more fluffy bow and a just a more decorative bow. And then I'm going to use a circle punch with more of that uh, upper blue grid and write the date from each Christmas tree. Um, and then I will add my journaling in in a moment. But at first I'm trying to add in just a few more embellishments that will help continue that bottom heavy shape with that gallon quart pint. There we go. I got them in the right order. The gallon quart pint um, method here. And then I want to balance out those heavy black and white Christmas tree photos with a little bit more black and white at the top. And luckily, the embellishments that I chose actually do have black and white on them. So I am choosing just a couple of these kind of snowflakey and floral um, polka dot, el uh, not polka dot, like um, I'd say enamel dots, but they're chipboard, uh, those elements up there at the top. And so, and then I'm just kind of filling in a little bit of trap space around my title and embellishment and my journaling tag with a few more embellishments so it doesn't feel like an awkward, empty space there. And I found a couple of phrases that will fit in there. And then I feel like I still got enough of that kind of pear shape to my layout that I'm happy with it and just a few fussy fiddling around with different pieces. I really wanted to get this Christmas tree chipboard on there. I was worried that if I put too much stuff on there, I would lose some of that, um, some of the flow to that bottom heavy layout. And I think I've got it balanced out. Okay. And then as I started journaling on that background polka dot paper, and I knew this was going to happen, um, it was too distracting. And so I decided to go ahead and pull out the vellum, which I should have just done to begin with, but you know, trying to save time and effort, and then you end up taking more time and effort to fix your mistake. But anyway, I did fix it and I got my journaling on there on my main tag and then the numbers go with each tree with a little bit more detail about each of those trees. And that is my partridge in a pear tree inspired layout. We are going to have uh, inspiration all month long. So I do hope you'll head over to the counterfeit kit challenge blog and check out posts every day that will take us through Christmas. Of course, I will have the links to the blog down for you in the show description so that you can easily get there. So thank you so much for watching, and I will be back later this month with a couple of regular videos, but I'm hoping to get in quite a few short festive videos to share with you this month because I know December is so busy for so many of us. I'd like to be sure to keep the channel fun without being overwhelming. So until then, have an artful day.